Hey folks, Simon here. Now you guys asked me to talk about my training and what I'm doing to improve my strength and my power on the bike. So this video is all about my focus over the next eight weeks and what I'm doing in training. And if you keep watching right to the end, I'll talk about the shift change in what I've been doing with my nutrition on my long rides, which I think has helped me recover faster so I can put out more effort when I'm doing my tougher training sessions. Righty, let's get into it. First off, let's track back. So I'm just waiting for Hope Route to confirm whether they're going to do the Hope Route Dolomites, and that's going to be in September. So right now they haven't actually published anything on their website yet. They've published some of their ones, but not the Dolomites. So let's track back from there. The biggest thing I'm doing next year is the Inferno Swiss. I'm taking the Inferno Swiss on as a solo competitor. It's a two day stage race with 137 miles each day covering 5,800 meters of climbing on each stage. That's going to be chunky. That's going to be in June next year. So why am I telling you all of this? Because then you can understand what I'm trying to do with my training. So let's talk about what I'm doing in April. I'm going to go to Mallorca. That's going to be for a big volume block with a bit of intensity. Plus I'm going to take on a few personal challenges to try and get around the island in as close to 10 hours as possible and also go back to Sarkloba and see if I can beat my time from last year and get under the 31 mark. So let's track back even more. So in February, I'm off to Tenerife. And in the first week, I'm just basically training and working from Tenerife itself. And then the second week, I've got a whole bunch of the guys from Vela Performance. We're going to do some training and we're also going to take on TD. And we want to try and post some really strong times up there. So here's my thinking, because for the last couple of months, I've been pretty rudderless with my training. I've been doing a bit of intensity. I've been riding long and having a bit of fun going to Rocca Corba and Girona and just basically enjoying the bike. I'm now having to reset and start thinking about building my power, my VO2 and my strength. Because let's face it, taking a bit of time off and being a bit rudderless, I know that my power has dropped. And I also know that my strength is still good, but I know that I can get stronger if I give that a big focus over the winter. The thing I keep trying to get across to people is that if you've been riding a bike for a long time, you probably have a very large aerobic pool. What we need to focus on, especially as older athletes, in my mind, is working on your VO2 and building your ability to put out raw power and strength. And you can only really do that in the gym. So let's jump onto my training peaks and I'll show you what I've been doing over the last three weeks. Week one was test week, so I did a Zwift ramp test and posted 296 as an FTP. A couple of days later, I did a hitting zone session just to make sure that the power and heart rate were absolutely bang on the money. My main focus in the gym is to lift as heavy as I can, focusing on squats and deadlifts, push and pull and core. And I've added a new core conditioning session which is focused on cross-rotational core work and lower and upper abs. The main focus of this block is VO2 to raise my aerobic ceiling and to get some power back, layered with aerobic riding through the midweek and at the weekends. And also the second focus is my hill reps, just to rebuild my hill climbing speed. You'll also notice there's some runs in there. Now this is a personal goal of mine to be able to get a run out without breaking down. I've had some really bad Achilles issues, so I'm just seeing if I can run walk it up to a point where I can get a good 20 minute run out. Tuesday is normally when I do VO2, but Andy couldn't make it. He's one of the guys that I coach. So I did a lactate shuttling session, which is tough, but not super tough. And it didn't kill me to go into my planned VO2 session, which was now on a Friday. I want to make those as quality driven as possible. I pushed on the volume on the third week and focused on the VO2 because I'm off to Scotland to go and see my mum and my brother. So it's a bit of a deload week before I push on again. I think it's good to point out here that my training is not pitch perfect week to week. Sometimes things get in the way and neither does yours need to be. It just needs to be as consistent as you can possibly make it. Riley, let's talk about the change in my nutrition for my longer bike rides. But first, let's talk about your hydration, especially in the winter. At this time of year, we tend to think we don't need to drink so much because it's cold outside. But in actual fact, we do because we're wearing more clothes and we tend to sweat more than we think we do. Remember, to maintain fluid balance within the cells, you need sodium anywhere between 1,000 milligrams right up to 1,500 milligrams per litre of water is pretty much my recommendation. Righty, let's talk about what I'm eating on the bike that I think has helped me recover faster and deliver more in my tougher training sessions. 
In the past, I've been eating about 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour on my aerobic rides because that's kind of all I really felt like I needed. But what I'm now doing is eating 80 grams of carbohydrate per hour. The knock-on effect of that, I think, has helped me deliver more on my tougher training sessions on the bike, and I definitely feel it's helped me recover faster. And this is something I talk about a lot with the people that I coach here at Velo because as we get older, it takes us about 24 hours longer to recover at the same level as our younger counterparts. Now, if we can eat in a way that's going to support our training and recovery, and if that means eating a bit more carbohydrate, then I'm all for that. Let's face it, you want your training to be quality driven, but you also want to make sure that you're maximizing your recovery from your training. Right, let's talk about motivation because at this time of year, it's tough to look at 2024 with any kind of excitement. I work a lot on the motivational side of things with the people that I coach and one of the cool things I get them to do, and maybe you can do this yourself, is to put yourself first in your diary. Now, what does that mean? Basically, it means you look at your working week and factor in your training and time for you first and then put everything around you. Now, I can guarantee for the people that instantly react to that and go, I can't do that. Those are the people that need to do it the most. The other thing I'm getting the guys and girls that I work with at Velo to think about is this. What are you going to do today that your future tomorrow is going to thank you for? Look, let's face it, motivation over the next couple of months is going to be tough. And this is something I chatted to with Jens Heitland in my last podcast. I'll put a link into the bottom of this video here. Righty, that's it for this week. Now, the more keen-eyed of you will have noticed the BMC is back and it's been pimped up. So, I'm not going to talk about that yet. I'm going to leave it until I get to Calpe over Christmas and let's reintroduce the BMC with its new pimped-up decals. Thanks for watching and I'll be back in a couple of weeks.